Hello, Jose. Hello, good morning, Desh. Welcome to our booth in MWC. How Thank is uh, MWC this year for you? Thank you for having me, first of all. So it's uh, exhausting and tiring as every year. <laughs> but we're happy to be here one year later. Um, I think it's an opportunity to be right at the pulse of the industry and also to look a bit beyond what normally is, is, is your you know, daily topic. Um, it's a place where the whole ecosystem comes together in the telecoms industry. And that makes us fascinating. Yeah. No, I think um, the numbers that I see right now, it's pretty much close to the pre-COVID era that we have. So it's looking like in 100% full force uh, this time. Great to see that. Uh, GTC is uh, at the forefront of consulting in the messaging and the entire ecosystem. So, and our cooperation in that space has been great. So would love to hear from you on uh, how has 2023 been uh, for the ecosystem? A mm. lot of volatility that we have seen in the messaging ecosystem. So mm. what's your perspective? Summing it up, for the first time, we see the international messaging declining. Yeah, it's not a steep decline, but um, just the fact that it's not increasing anymore is making many market players nervous. Yeah. So um, operators, could lean back in the past and see the revenue increasing from month to month. This is not happening anymore. So they kind of woke up and need to find any kind of business model, any kind of solution. They need to change something uh, on a strategic level um, in order to mitigate the problem. Something similar might happen also for the service providers, but the service providers they also benefit from other phenomenons in the industry, like um, the artificial traffic. Mm -hmm. That is a problem for the industry on one side. At the same time, many market players, mainly the service providers, are benefiting from it. That makes it um, yeah, very interesting i would say you know how are the different market players going to deal with it um that's an interesting yeah. moment now we're facing no artificial traffic is a very very key topic for 2023 mm -hmm. and uh, as we go into 2024 and uh, we continue to see artificial traffic affecting the uh, international a2p uh, volumes and prices so uh, how is it impacting telco um, I mean, if telcos know about it, I mean, what are they doing about it? I think, uh, can you give a perspective on that? Yeah, so um, I assume you mean operators with uh, telcos. So operators have been blind for a very long time. And for a good reason, they have been blind because in most cases, this artificial traffic is not even reaching them. So it's generated by the service provider and intercepted by the service provider. And with that, the benefit stays with the service provider. And with service provider, I mean the market player that is connecting the enterprise to the operator. There could be more market players in between, but let me simplify. Now they see for the first time international traffic declining and they ask themselves, why is that happening? So they start to dig a bit more into the details. Um, and the details sometimes don't look as shiny as they seem to look in the past. Yeah. yeah, there could be a bit of dirt on the way mm -hmm. in the value chain. Yeah. And, um, and that is expressed to a certain extent um, by the artificial traffic that, that is obviously harmful for enterprises mainly, but also for operators. Why? Because this is one of the reasons why enterprises get tired of this SMS service to, to support uh, their um, processes and authentication. And so they might be looking for alternative channels. Yeah. And alternative channels means it could be a WhatsApp that is completely bypassing the operator. Mm -hmm. So um, that's something that should be a concern for the operators. And once an enterprise changes the channel, mm -hmm. which is painful enough for them, the likelihood of coming back is not that high. 
Yeah. Uh, it's not only the price. You could obviously come back as an operator and say, look, I have a better price. Mm -hmm. um, just the pain of migrating, of changing the technology for an enterprise uh, that has a core business completely different to Telco, that's um, something that uh, the enterprises don't like to go through very yeah. often. So you're right that, uh, you know, they've already seen this turmoil. Now, what are telcos really ready to do? What solutions and what options are there in front of telcos to address this challenge? Well, let me be quite radical. Mm -hmm. e eliminate the, the, the middleman, you know, <laughs> and then you have the solution. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the theory. We know that in practical terms is a bit difficult. Why? Because obviously you lack on resource of resources on the operator side, also on the enterprise side. Also the enterprise don't have resources to, to deal with all operators in the world. So I think um, it's a matter of, um, you know, selecting probably the, the, the partners that contribute probably to 80% of, of, of your revenues and, and probably trying to engage with them directly. Mm -hmm. um, there is also an interest um, uh, on the enterprise side to deal directly with the, with the operator, especially um, for the, the hyperscalers and OTTs that have been um, suffering the artificial traffic and that are conscious about the problem. Mm -hmm. um, one of the famous people that uh, express very concrete numbers um, and, and concretely also the problem was Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. It was more or less exactly one year ago. Yeah. You know, he quantified 60 million US dollars um, financial damage for Twitter within one year and spoke about the SMS scam. This yeah. is the way he expressed it. No, you're right. So um, while telcos in short term gain from artificial traffic and they might have, uh, I mean, they are also worried and they want to solve from a sustainability of revenue, mm. but enterprises are struggling today. So while we looked at telcos, what can enterprises, brands do? Because SMS is an important channel mm. for them. What are the measures they can do uh, to safeguard their interest that they're not paying for fake bot traffic, yeah. right? Well, I mean, they need to improve their applications, obviously, you know, an application that is allowing to create um, um, five uh, fake accounts in a row, uh, probably even for the same um, B number, mm -hmm. you know, is not an application that is secure um, towards the fake um, account generation. This is now a very simple uh, example, but you have uh, on IT level many mechanisms in order to detect um, the, 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 the bot um, mm -hmm. compared to the, to the human behavior uh, without getting into more details. So this is where obviously where they need to invest. Um, but I tell you something funny. I mean, there are um, many enterprises that uh, like to have more accounts yeah. and uh, how, where the account is generated becomes like secondary because they're just counting the number of accounts, this is related to the short-term objectives that they also receive. Um, so this is probably something, especially the, the very large players have been enjoying for a long time. Yeah. You know, the increasing number of accounts that they have been publishing as a success. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, you know, they, they came a flipping point probably where, where the pain was, was more than the benefit. And, and, and this is where they thought, oops, yeah. We probably need to do something about it. And so the problem uh, is a little more complicated, and there is complex many vested interest of many different parties of why the problem is not tackled. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, exactly. Yeah. But I think the moment we see the traffic declining, it means that that the pain felt or is felt uh, to the entire value yeah. chain. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, Jose, I mean, today we are in. February 2024, 12 months from now, let's say when we enter into February 2025 and we are sitting again with discussing A2P business, international A2P business, what do you think the year would look like? Like if you have to reflect back on uh, the year, what would be your forecast for next year? Well, when it comes to the topic we just discussed, there is... Um, a clear change in terms of the 
power distribution, I would say, within the different market players. The, the largest um, generators of uh, A2P SMS mm -hmm. have repositioned themselves. They have taken an aggressive approach. Mm -hmm. And the aggressive approach can be as simple as stopping the SMS and authentication process for one country, for one network. Yeah. Um, and that is uh, the moment that um, the service providers, the operators feel the pain on their side. So mm -hmm. now we, we, we switch the sides in, in terms of feeling the pain. Mm -hmm. And this is where um, the negotiations between those hyperscalers and OTTs and the operators um, gain different um, form, I would say, um, because they just have a, a better negotiation power. Yeah. Um, so th that's something that um, that will lead to new price pricing scheme to a certain extent, to different types of um, agreements, because the operator will say, okay, um, I give in on the pricing, but I will um, expect from you a multi-year commitment. Could mm -hmm. be, yeah. yeah. Um, I think the operators need to have a response in order to avoid that the um, traffic shifts to channels that are not monetized. Yeah. Yeah. Like and flash calls and it could be flash call, it could be oh, WhatsApp, it could be other yeah. um, OTT um, messaging apps. Uh, it could be RCS within the Google Guest program that is bypassing operators. Uh, it could be text to speech, yeah. where probably they're still in the value chain, mm -hmm. but uh, they in a smaller reduce revenues significantly wherever voice is, is cheaper than SMS. It could be email. Yeah, it doesn't sound that sexy. We don't mm -hmm. consider it as messaging, but it's an alternative channel that enterprise are, are using. So, and it could be also mobile identity. Yeah, so a simple mm -hmm. network query that is happening in the background um, where the user interaction is not required to complete the transaction. Great. I think the brands have tons of options in terms of authentication as we go along. But uh, we really hope that uh, the simplicity of SMS that they've been able to leverage for so many years continues and we bring sanity to the whole ecosystem with, uh, I think, price control and management, but also with a lot of technology around AI. If enterprises are able to adopt, understand the, uh, the numbers and control the data, I think that's also one way to manage and find mm -hmm. out what's happening with their traffic. Mm. and control the traffic flow. But great having you and great, uh, you know, thanks to you around uh, AIT. I think this is a very interesting space for the entire industry. And I'm sure all the listeners would really benefit from your wise words. And uh, thank great. you so much. Thanks for having me. All the best uh, to Conviva, to Tech Mahindra. You know, I think you are on a, on a very good path. Just continue like that and uh, shake up the industry. Thank you so much.